Hi friends, today I'll be reading the story Old Penn Station by the artist and author William Lowe. In the 1890s, Pennsylvania Railroad Company was one of the most powerful businesses in the United States. It had the biggest steam locomotives and its tracks reached every major city from Boston to Chicago. Every major city but one, New York. That's because the heart of New York City is an island called Manhattan. Since the Pennsylvania Railroad Company had no access to bridges or tunnels into Manhattan, its trains could not cross the Hudson River. When the conductor called out, last stop, all passengers got off, all passengers off for New York, everyone was still in New Jersey. Passengers who wanted to go to New York City had to take a ferry. But the mighty Pennsylvania Road Railroad Company was determined to have its trains cross the R Hudson River into Manhattan and wanted to do it with style. So the company hired the architectural firm of McKim, Mead, and White to design a palace on West 32nd Street for the new electric trains, which were fastly replacing the older steam-driven locomotives. Look at that picture. Beautiful. Hundreds of men were put to work. Tunnel workers called sand hogs burrowed slowly under the Hudson River. A half a million cubic feet of pink granite was cut from the quarries of Milford, Massachusetts. Stonemasons carved these blocks into clocks, maidens, and majestic eagles, designed by the famous sculptor Adolf Alexander Weinman. The station was completed in 18, 1910. Trains going into Manhattan came through New Jersey and continued down the new tunnels under the river until they reached the, their final destination. Last stop, Pennsylvania Station, the conductor would call out, welcome to New York City. From the platforms, passengers could see the sky. The station's concourse looked like a magical spider web of metal and glass. Penn Station workers were proud of their new building, and they worked hard to keep everything clean, shiny, and working in tip-top shape. Passengers who were lost or needed assistance with their bags asked a friendly Penn Station porter for help. Passengers who needed a haircut, shave, or a spit shine polish, shoe shine, went to the first class barbershop by the station concourse. Passengers who were hungry could have dinner at this fabulous Savarin restaurant. Passengers who were tired could sit in, mar in the marvelous waiting room. Sunlight streamed through the windows, filling the room with dappled light. For many, it was a magical experience. The wonderful station was built to move people. At the end of World War II, hundreds of thousands of soldiers and officers crowded the concourse to return home to their families. When the war ended, Americans wanted new lives. They wanted to marry, start families, and buy new cars and houses in the suburbs. In the 1950s, highways were built to connect these houses to the city, and many people began to see trains as old-fashioned. The leaders of the Pennsylvania Railroad Company couldn't imagine how trains would fit into their, this new world. They tried to modernize the station and their trains, but nothing worked. As a, as a result, the Great Penn Station struggled to survive. The Pennsylvania Railroad Company was losing money, so its leaders came up with a plan. They decided to make Penn Station smaller and move it underground. They would build up a new, brand new sports stadium and modern office tower on top. But before this could be done, the magnificent building had to be torn down. As Penn Station was destroyed, the shell of Madison Square Garden and the new Penn, State, Penn Plaza was built. Jackhammers rattled, bulldozers pushed, cranes lifted up, new beams up and carried old beams down. The station remained open despite the noise and dirt. Many passengers had to run to their trains to, to escape the turmoil. During the demolition, nothing was spared, not even the statues. Sledgehammers were used to dismantle the clocks and the sculptures of the maidens. A few people looked up when the cranes came for the eagles, but no one could stop the destruction. There's the eagle coming down off the building and the maiden.
That's a maiden. There's an eagle. A few of these statues were saved and found new homes and museums in other places around the country, but most of the debris was shipped across the river and dumped into the marshes of the New Jersey Meadowlands. In 1966, the bulldozers, dump trucks, and cranes left West 32nd Street. The palace was gone forever. New Yorkers did not realize what they had until it was taken away. After the destruction of Penn Station, many people were angry. Some became outraged enough to start the New York City Landmarks Preservation Commission, which promised to save other beautiful old buildings from the wrecking ball and to preserve the charm of the city. The commission kept its promise when it saved the Grand Central Terminal and many other historical buildings from the same fate that had befallen Grand, uh, Penn Station. And there's Penn, the new Penn Station. The Great Pennsylvania Railroad Station was much more than a train station. It was designed to be a monument to rail travel. Its beauty and grandeur were gifts to the city. Today, the memory of Penn Station's destruction still lingers. It has become a powerful symbol, a reminder that buildings are not just concrete and still. They are the heart and soul of all great cities. The End I hope you enjoyed today's book, Old Penn Station. I did, and I can't wait to hear from you guys about it. Talk to you later. Bye, friends.